We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars Wrestling Show, episode 417. I'm your man behind the microphone and your current Scholars of Wrestling party champ, Scholar Jeff. Joining us this week is the one only Scholar Brian. Scholar Brian, how are you doing today, sir? It's uh, been a pretty interesting week. It's very good wrestling this week that's that makes it a very good week and i do i do like that there's a focus now we're finally in the direction of everything's coming together for wrestlemania everything the revolution is over so we can start building new storylines that way a lot of good stuff going on in wrestling right now, which is very different from a year ago. <laughs> Absolutely. Also joining us this week is the Scholars of Wrestling world champion himself, Scholar Charlie. Scholar Charlie, how's your evening going? And Scholar in the Bank. Oh, the and thing. Scholar in the Bank, Mr. I'm the, I'm the big old mountain to climb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sleepy boy. I actually set alarms during SmackDown for 9.45 and 10 p.m. just to do this show. Yes, we're, we're up past our bedtime this time around. Yes, we're we're all a bunch of lightweight, sleepy babies. But last but not least, I got no better segue than that. We've got our man and yours, the coach, Scholar Jeremy. Scholar Jeremy, how's life treating you, sir? Pretty good. Back two weeks in a row. Um, normally, I'm face deep in video games on Friday, but um, uh, nothing was going on tonight, so I want to catch up with you boys. And what a week it's been! And like Brian said, it's the best. Um, what a difference a year makes to where we were wrestling wise. But it's been a good week, and I'm enjoying it. Absolutely. And let's be real. There's nothing really to play at the moment. We all sped run through the Resident Evil Four demo. We've got no more <laughs> yes. excuses. Now it's time to gotta... talk wrestling. Yep. All right. So let's what do you say we kick things off the right way with a little segment we like to call Backstage News, where we take a look at a peek behind that curtain and we take a look at the news that that is infecting the wrestling world in a little segment we like to call, say it with me, Brian. Backstage news. 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 WrestleMania season. Yay. Yay. Not meh. Not meh. Once. Not meh. <laughs> Speaking of WrestleMania, it's again, we tape on set on Fridays right after SmackDown. And we had a fairly large announcement this week. We got the first entrance into the Hall of Fame class of 2023, and it is Rey Mysterio. I heard some rumors going around hours before the show went live that it was going to be the great Muda. Yep. I'm that's not sure I, where that's that That's what is. I heard. Well, the, I, the, it, it wasn't that the great Muda was going to be announced tonight. It's just that the great Muda will be in the Hall of Fame. So the great mute is going to get announced, but he's not. He, he, the way WWE works, okay, he's probably not like a main attraction for a WWE mm. Hall of Fame. For a pro wrestling Hall of Fame, yes. But for a WWE Hall of Fame, he's not the first name that gets announced. Now, I'm, I'm not... The the name that was announced, okay, definitely deserves to be in there, no doubt. Did a lot for his style of wrestling. Is is an icon to most people, excluding one that that we have here. But that's <laughs> but it this one seems kind of weak. For me, because you know that they're only doing it for the storyline that's going on right now. So it's like, yeah, Ray, Ray Mysterio going into the Hall of Fame makes sense. He he would be, in WWE's terms, a leading 
a main attraction for the Hall of Fame. I do, I just don't like that they immediately use it as a crutch for the Dominic Mysterio Rey Mysterio storyline. That's like, interesting. Like it was immediate. It was immediate. Like thirty oh, yeah. seconds. It was after announced. Dominic yeah. Mysterio is coming out, punk, punking him out. I'm like, you didn't even give him a. You didn't even oh. give him two minutes to celebrate. Thirty seconds, and it's okay. over. Okay. <laughs> Am I the only one and, and who I mean, didn't really care? Like to me, this honestly just struck me as, okay, this big storyline is happening right now. Rey Mysterio deserves it, like few others do at this point. So why not just cross them both off the list do some cross yeah, promotion it, it, here that that's all well and good but i mean but but for me it's just like he's a main attraction give him three minutes before you but before you bring the storyline <laughs> i'm like give him three minutes to do a little speech and then you have dominic mysterio come come down and punk him out he got 15 seconds. He got down to the ring and Dominic Mysterio is already coming out, which fine, fair play. If you're going to continue the storyline, fine, do it. But give the guy a couple minutes. Then again, my hey, mentality hey. first is that when the, the speeches come around, the inevitable speeches, he's going to get at least like 10 to 15, if not more. Before Dominic comes in and does it again. <laughs> <laughs> booyaka, booyaka. Uh, I'm fighting my son. I I agree. It was a it was cool to see that he's going into um the Hall of Fame. But for me, I'm sorry, I've not been a Mysterio fan in like 20 years. So I was like, oh, cool, he's going in. Next, like I, he deserves it. He's done a lot for the industry with the cruiserweights and WCW and working his way up. I just like for WWE, it works, but it's not like. In my opinion, it's not a big name for a Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Just I, everybody, a lot of people I know, are like, oh, a little bit mystery. I'm like, eh, 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 okay. I Kinda honestly <laughs> thought it was. I honestly thought it was going to be Batista. The way oh, this yeah, is, he, he's <laughs> better head of the class than the, the, the Yeah, the, I agree. The way that the, the way that WWE's been picking him up since the. Since his movies started going mainstream and he started getting bigger in the movies, I would have been like, "You're in L.A., you're in Hollywood this this year. Like this is the time. If there was any time, it would be this year." And and like I I still think he's gonna go in, but I would have led with him. Well, on that note, here's a little mini scholars quick talk for you all. Is it possible or even likely that they could get Batista in this class too? Your thoughts? I think so. Um, I, I, do, I, I don't know if they do it now because I would think that they would, uh, I, I would think that he would have been the first name you would announce yeah. if you were going to do it. But I, there is a possibility that they could do it. I just, I just see him more as a leading man than a, than a secondary pick in, in yeah. this, in, in this case. Hmm. Um, I, I think like since they were both really popular in the early two thousands, I kind of think you should break them up into two separate um, fall hall of fames personally. Cause you think about it cause they were tag team partners. So why would you put them on the same hall of fame card? I feel like if they're going to do it, do it this year if you want to, but if not, push him to next year and have him the headline. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, while we're on the subject of the Hall of Fame, after I feel like we haven't really talked about it very much for quite a while, now that if the rumors of Great Mood are to be believed, and outside of Rey Mysterio and Batista at this point, who else would you like to see in the Hall of Fame? This year, anyway. a good question yeah well i'll tell you i'll get started on this one then i'll tell you what i got i've been doing some recent uh surveys from wwe where occasionally they'll get some fan feedback on a particular show about some concepts that they want to run by 
this one were was for WWE legends who a lot of them were in the Hall of Fame, but they're still like well-known names that may necessarily not necessarily be in the Hall of Fame right now. And one of the names that I saw on that list that I really feel is absolutely deserving to be in the Hall of Fame, but I don't really hear his name mentioned very often lately, Sabu. He would yeah. be a big time ballot for me, save especially him, if there's save him for Philly list. next year. Yeah, you know you what? Can't That's do, an idea. Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah. do Shabu anywhere else than Philly. You can't. Yeah. Anywhere else doesn't make sense. <laughs> Except for maybe Michigan, but that's when, when are they going to have a, a WrestleMania in Michigan? Exactly. Um, oh. the, have they put demolition in yet? No, Not I yet. don't know. I so. No, I, I, oh man, I'd like to see, I'd like to see demolition get in to, hmm. um, Because don't they, like, normally put in, like, a tag team? That's a fair thing. They usually want to throw in at least one tag team a year. It's At least that's the way it seems. Yeah. And and who would you put in for uh, female? Victoria. Here? Victoria. Ooh, good choice. I like it. Yeah, that and, one I haven't um, given too much, too much thought to, but Victoria is a solid choice. Any other thoughts? Uh, Big Show. Hmm. Big Show's another I one. Think, so I guess we sort of take him for granted. Yeah, he's that, in AEW, but would okay. would WWE do it if if he was under contract somewhere else? No, probably. Hmm. That, that's, that's actually that's, a good question. Actually, hmm. that's I think the if he one was thing under contract like with impact or something they would be like yeah just loan him to us for a night and then give him the yeah. hall of fame but not AEW, no way hmm. interesting but charlie brought up a good point with a female um personally mickey james i think mickey james should go in eventually that's a good one yeah honestly yeah she, Mick- i would say she's more deserving than no offense to victoria but mickey james especially the, her legacy post wwe it's undeniable both on the same level they both should go in yeah so oh i'm no they doubt both they'll should, both go in eventually yeah they they both should go in but if we're put but if we're talking between the two i do mickey james first and then do yeah. victoria next year what are you saying john no i i agree that it should be mickey james this year and victoria next year if we're talking uh like what they've done hmm. interesting do we have any thoughts on a uh Celebrity. Oh, geez. Put it because they do one of those every year. That is a very good question. Hmm. Is uh, Cindy Walker in by chance? Oh, good point. I don't think so. Yeah, they might. I, I they did... might put. They might put her in because of the because of the Rock uh, TV show. And and Becky Lynch playing Cindy Lauper, yeah. they they might they might pull the trigger. They they would do that, wouldn't they? Yeah. I was just thinking, cause like she was at the first WrestleMania, and she's such a part important. Excuse me, important part of a wrestling history with the Rock and Wrestling connection. So. Very true. And speaking of music, there's one other name that just reoccurred to me that I haven't thought of for a while, but it makes all the sense in the world that he needs to be there. Jim Johnston. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That I don't know how they get him or how they classify him, but he absolutely deserves to be there a hundred percent. If not this year, then sometime very soon. Something's got to give eventually. Yeah, the guy who wrote ninety percent of the wrestling songs we know, definitely. Mm Hmm. But anyway, I'm sure we're going to be touching on this as the weeks develop, leading into WrestleMania. But elsewhere, we also got yet another announcement of another returning classic pay-per-view. The king and queen of the ring is going to be returning in a Saudi Arabia super show. And my, my reaction to this was honestly a little mixed. First of all, 
I'm overjoyed that the King of the Ring is coming back, especially with something for the ladies this time. But because of when how they're going to be presenting in Saudi Arabia, I'm also thinking of what format is the show going to take? But also, how big of a stage is this going to be? Because I think we all know how the Saudi Arabia shows tend to go. The scope is huge, and the presentation is as big as you get. Mm-hmm. All I know, all I know, is what's his name can't be in the tournament. The the, the maximum male models, the, the not Mace, the Mansoor. Mansoa. Mansoa. No, he can't be in it because if he if it's Saudi Arabia, he's got to win the damn thing, and we can't have it. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's. Uh, I don't like that it's being held in Saudi Arabia because I don't like the Saudi Arabia shows as it is. But that's the only thing I have against it. <laughs> it I agree with Brian. It's it's the. the the, the king and queen of the ring when they did it last year okay i loved it i it, it was fun i i enjoyed it it's it's just like i i don't like that saudi arabia gets their own specialty shows i'm like if saudi arabia wants wants pay-per-views and all that just keep them as the glorified house shows that they were <laughs> okay and but the uh, the fact that we're getting, uh, I like that they're making it yearly again. I mm. I like that they're I I, w- I would like the king and queen of the ring to actually mean something this time, because it's like yeah, Xavier Woods won the king of the ring. What did he do with it? As mm-hmm. much as they would oh, let yeah. him do. Zelina won Queen of the Ring. What did they do with that? They made it a character. Whatever. <laughs> what are we doing? It, it's like King and Queen of the Ring is all well and good, but but let's have some stakes this time. Let, yeah, let's, have it be for, let's have it be for like a title shot or something. Or at least make it more prestigious this time around. And that's really the one big thing that I'm actually excited about with this, where even if you don't like the Saudi Arabia shows and all of that, like, I don't see how they can mess this up. Like, if you want, like, a big prestigious Saudi Arabia show, given the format of what and how the King of the Ring tournament goes... I don't see that. I don't see how they can mess this up. Like, there's here, here's been, the pro, here, I'm sorry. The, here's the problem. Here's the problem with that statement. Okay, it's it's when we say stuff like that. I don't see how they can mess this up. That's when they figure out a way. I'm, I'm like, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter Absolutely. who's running the show. It doesn't matter who's running the show. It's like when the words are actually said, I don't see how they can mess this up. Inevitably, they will find a way. And the the actual show itself could be amazing, could be good, could get the result we want, all that. We got the result we wanted last year when when Austin Creed won, when Xavier Woods won. Okay, but it's how you handle the aftermath that decides whether the tournament was prestigious or whether it was just something that they did. Okay, and that's and and that's how you gotta handle the king and queen of the ring. The tournament itself doesn't matter if the aftermath doesn't hit the doesn't stick the landing. Okay, so that's what you have to worry about. So that's what you have to worry about. The show in Saudi Arabia could go swimmingly. Okay, it won't matter in the end if it doesn't if it doesn't lead to anything. All that being said, I'm sorry, continue, Jeremy. 
Oh no, all I was gonna say was I agree. I just think they should do it um old school where like King of the Ring was like your crowning moment where you're gonna get the world title shot. Do it that way, like literally give it to someone who deserves it and give them a push. That's all I'm saying. Give it give them a push. Give me give a match against the IC title, the US title. Just like don't be don't do what they did last year. Like don't just like have them win and then just oh I'm king and queen of the ring. Literally make it mean something like Brian and you have been saying. Really like like when you have like Austin, you have Owen Hart, you have Triple H, you have I know Billy Gunn's career got killed by the rock, but still they were going places with those guys and now just being king of the ring just means nothing. I remember it was one of my first pay per views I ever went to um in East Rutherford. It was a great time in two thousand and one and now I'm like Why'd you get rid of it? It was just such a fun pay per view to do every year. So, yeah, I was gonna say like that. Even again, even if you don't like the the Saudi Arabia treatment or the pay per views, whatever you got, I, I'm just it's still. I, this feels like a total monkey's paw situation. Like someone wished on a monkey's paw. I wish the King of the Ring was a big deal it again. That's like it was me. <laughs> there was, you are. We found well, you. I love me a King of the Ring tournament. It's even when they're in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. So <laughs> even though, oh, brother. That being said, now that we do have a King of the Ring tournament confirmed, knee jerk reaction, gut instinct, what are some names that you want to see in these tournaments? Go. Dominic Mysterio. Okay. Yeah, go. I'll, the first name that jumped into my mind is honestly uh, Piper Niven. Okay. Uh, Sh- Shotzi. Piper Niven, Shotzi. Good picks. For some Pretty reason, good. the women are are coming into my mind as far as King uh, Queen of the Ring participants. Way easier than the guys are. Yeah. Get, get Tegan Knox in there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, get a, I I like to, hmm. on the men's side. You got to you got to give Gable another run. Okay. At it. Um, Ricochet, of course. No. Mm-hmm. Don't don't put anybody who's already who already has like big name value in there because that's what King of the Ring used to be. Okay, King of the Ring was the jumping point. That's how Edge got it. That's how Edge got started. Before yeah. the before he won the briefcase, he won the King of the yeah. Ring. Uh, Owen Hart, Triple H, Austin. That's all how they got their start. Austin 316 happened to King of the Ring. Yeah. Okay. That, all so, that being said, I, a name just popped into my mind that would fit among those names. Right now, Montez Ford. Yes, 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 yes. 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 good yes. stuff. Definitely, I like King it. Tez. I like it. And I'd have like it. And I'd have him. And I'd have him win the Dante. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like I'm out, that. from what you just described, that man just seems like if it's go- if anyone's gonna be elevated to the next level, this could be it for Montez. Easy. Yeah, you, you just yeah. It, that's it. It's done. Put it, put there we go. We just booked King of the Ring. You're welcome, we're done. WWE. Checks in the mail, I'm sure. Yeah. Four checks better be in the mail. <laughs> Five, actually. Five. Yes. Nice and equal. Because you, know you know that if he was here, he probably would have said it first. <laughs> hey, I'll take credit for this oh, one. I don't care. Eric loves that, man. Hey, <laughs> guys. Good stuff. Good stuff. I think everyone loves Tez right now. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's he's proved himself way beyond the shadow of a doubt. And when he's he's there, he's just waiting. It's not a matter of if, but when at this point. But all that being said, we cannot neglect the fact that we have just come off the heels of AEW's biggest show yet. We also have AEW Revolution in the cover, and. Oh boy, this was another blockbuster show, top to bottom. Again, a little long, a lot going on, 
but we also had a whole lot of really great matches. And we also, the first one that really jumps to my mind outside of the main event was one, probably a contender for the, one of the stronger matches of the night. The House of Black finally defeated the Elite to become the new trios champions of AEW. This, where I was watching with, uh, with you, Jaybird, live and this one was probably one of the more exciting nerve-wracking matches to watch they had us on the edge of our seats dude with like those close falls um the first dante inferno the hit i'm like oh oh and they broke up at the very last second like we were hooked and i just remember the house of black finally wins and we just stand we're just like yeah finally holy snap i couldn't that that match that pay, this whole pay-per-view before i'll gush in a couple of minutes but this pay-per-view were, like blew my expectations out of the water but that match literally is yeah on my top tier for match of the year right now yeah legit legitimately okay this show depending on what you like in your wrestling okay for me there's three legitimate match of the year candidates on on this on this show depending on what depending on what you like in your wrestling i think i okay. see where you're going with this yeah there, there were three you. there there were three legitimate matches where if you said right now that it's like as of right now this is my match of the year and you said any one of those three i'd be like i can't i i have nothing to say against that and that six man tag was one of them. That was perfect drama in a wrestling match. The near falls, okay. I, the only person in the WWE who could do near falls like that, the king of near falls right now is Roman Reigns. I'm sorry. That that's just the way it is. That dude could do two point nine nine nine. <laughs> that that dude can do 2.999 like nothing <laughs> and, and that's and but you've got six guys in one match who make every near fall look look like okay this is it this is it oh crap no it's not it we're still done and it, we're still going and it was perfect drama i'm on the edge of my seat the entire time i'm watching and the right team won. And this is the one thing I can say for this entire pay-per-view. Okay. Mm. No established name won. No, no, every person who won, what I mean by established is someone who's been doing it for years. Nobody, nobody who is already made one good point okay. and yes and yes i count mjf in that and yeah every, i definitely anybody, see what you mean yeah it's like this show was all about putting new stars over mm -hmm. and and that's and that's why it's like even if something didn't work a hundred percent Okay, it's still every match here had stakes. Yeah, I'm bringing in the tag team match too. <laughs> okay, that's it. The that tag was team good. Title it was a match great match. Too. The, I'm not gonna go that far, but it's like it it had purpose because because of what happened at the end of it. But it but but it yeah, there were three match of the year candidates. The six man tag, the trios tag titles were definitely were definitely one of them. And when you saw the participants in the match, like if you didn't know the story going in, which hey, technically there really wasn't a story going in. <laughs> but it's like you saw you saw the match on the card and you're like, well, that's gotta be a banger. <laughs> and guess what? It was. It lived up to the billing and then some. Definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, speaking of living up to the billing and then some and potential match of the night and a match of the year candidates, 
I'm going to go out of limb and say that uh, Hangman Page beating John Moxley in a Texas death match, in a real particularly brutal one too. I got to say that that's probably going to be up there, isn't it? I agree. Oh, yeah. That match was, for me, it was a little tough to watch because, like, just the barbed wire and everything. But now my wife and I have a new saying. We get pissed at something, brick them. Straight up, just brick them. <laughs> just that match was, oh, my God. That match blew me out of the water. And just, it was so good. The storytelling, I loved. The brutality and the fact that, like, Hangman showed a darker side, and I love when it. I love it when a babyface brings out his dark side and really shows he can really break the pain. Like, I'm like, oh my god, on Dynamite, Moxley looks like he's 100. percent Hangman walked out and he limped out, so you can tell who's got the better healing factor. But oh man, that match was. I I was watching that. And I'm just like, okay, you're making me wince, but oh man, you have my attention for every second. Yeah, this one I can understand why some people may not have liked it too much. But for me, I guess I'm just a sick bastard. I love this like, <laughs> bloody war. It's like, it was, and the fact that great. he actually, especially I didn't even pick up on it right as it happened. But then at, when I saw what he was going for, the way he finished Moxley and made him give up by literally hanging him. Like, it's not even just if you don't tap out, you're going to break a, an arm or something. No, if you don't tap out, you are going to die to the hangman who is now hanging you tap bitch funny. chris saban actually tweeted um the reason he's called hangman was he hung him at an roh house an roh show years ago and he put all the pictures and i'm like oh that's where he got it from I'm like, exactly. nice job, saban. so i'm like so i'm like this isn't something new but it's as i said in in the build up to the match okay this was all about getting hangman page back to to the point where he was before everything that happened with cm punk okay and i actually think based on what happened at the pay-per-view that he's even more over i i said it on twitter i'm like he's even more over now because he out moxley moxley Mm -hmm. okay and not and moxley put him over so hard <laughs> that i'm, I'm like do, Mo, i don't remember the last time moxley tapped out even as dean okay not that i remember and, and oh. I, I i think it was when the the first time the shield lost they lost to the undertaker and it was because dean tapped out to the uh Escape. to whatever his go-go platter hold was it, but it, it's like it, you made moxley tap out okay and not a and lot of people can do that exactly it's like mox and and it's like that's that's why that's why moxley is revered the way he is when he picks you and he's like I'm going to work with that guy. I want to work with that guy. I want to get that guy over and he's going to be at the top. Well, hang, Hangman is at the top right now. And I could venture to say, um, I'm not sure if I want him to be the one to take the title off of MJF. I'm reserving that for somebody else, but he's definitely a worthy option right now because holy crap i don't think he's ever going to be more over yeah that definitely got him exactly where he needed to go and like you said i think you're alluding to the third of the the potential matches of the night and no one i certainly am not going to argue against it mjf did indeed retain his aw world title against brian danielson in overtime in what was probably it went on for a while, but th that last 15 to 20 minutes, oh boy, that was a trip. And if you were one of the few who had any doubt in your mind about MJF and what he's capable of, doubt no more. I agree. That match, like, it was one of the better Iron Man matches I've seen in recent years. And it just literally, 
blew my expectations out of the water because it just it was so good. Like I love what was it? Uh, Justin Roberts goes 60 seconds and they're exhausted, they're worn down. They they, they just start throwing bombs at each other. I'm like, and fight. And uh, it was, that it honestly was struck me as being a little funny. Like they're waiting for some gotta, cue from the ref, and he just uh, 60 seconds and punches. Hmm. Uh, it was it was glorious. It was a glorious glorious match. Hands down, it's up there for contender of the year. Yeah, it's oh, interesting. For me, I'm yeah, sorry, for, for me, I don't know how people are going to take this, but I'm me, so I'm going to say it anyway. This is the best Iron Man match I have ever seen. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. I'm going back and... I'm going back to Brett and Sean. I'm like, I think MJF and Brian Danielson was better. I think it flowed smoother. I think it went, I, it was more action packed. It, 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 everything that happened made sense. The drama for the last 20, 20 to 25 minutes was some of the best I've ever seen. And of, and the ending, of course. You made him tap out to his own move. <laughs> With, I'm, like, I'm like, yeah, it's it's like I can honestly say that. And and look people in the face and not feel bad about it. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. That's I've heard that statement a lot and I'm not going to disagree with it in the slightest. And I don't feel like there's any shame in that. It's not like you're dissing the original Iron Man match. It's not like you're dissing Brett or Sean, but it's just a matter of just not only personal taste, but law of averages eventually anyway. Like it's noteworthy, the the Brett Sean match, because it was the first, it was very well done but you got to imagine at some point someone somewhere is going to improve the formula after working with it for so long about it being such a big match with such a big knowledge base eventually people will deconstruct it some really talented professional wrestlers are going to master the formula and take it up to a whole new level and I feel like that's what MJF and Brian Danielson did this time. It's not like you're dissing Brett or Sean or anything else that came before. Brett and Sean was great. But this one with some of the best generational talents of our of the time in MJF and Brian Danielson, it doesn't strike me as being a controversial statement in the slightest. I, I can agree with both of you because um, in an age of wrestling where the fans don't have a lot of attention span, you maybe can get a good 20 minutes, 25 minutes out of them and they just lose attention. I was watching that whole match from beginning to end. It was very entertaining. So I definitely agree with, like, I don't say it's the best match, Brian, but it definitely is on par with Brett and um, Sean at uh, WrestleMania 12. It's a good match. I have to reevaluate. Give me some time for it to really marinate, but I think it's on the same level as the original Iron Man match. It was, it was definitely like very high caliber. They had a lot of great spots. That elbow, that um, what was it? The elbow to the outside to the table. That was a great spot. Oh man, they just he he hits <laughs> that elbow like nobody else. Yes, he does. <laughs> I'll tell you that I'd... this now. Oh. Now that we're on the subject, let, let's put our money where our mouth is. In your opinion, Scholar's Quick Talk, what is your favorite Iron Man match? Jay, I'm calling you out. Which one's your favorite? Oh, ooh, ah, oh, man. Ah, oh, I'm going to have to... Mm. I'm going to have to stick with Brett and Sean for now. I'll reevaluate in a couple of weeks, but still Brett and Sean squeaks out MJF and uh, Dan Bryan just by just a little bit. I'll tell you what, I'm going to say it right now. MJF, maybe it's recency bias. I'll admit that, but I'm going to go with MJF and Brian Danielson. That's probably one of the best Ironman matches I've ever seen. 
it's been years since I since I've seen Triple H Rock, so I'm gonna have to maybe rewatch oh, that yeah, for the second look. One. But right now, MJF is the best one in recent memory, if not ever. I gotta Ryan, stick with. Uh, yeah, I know you got one. If you got some, the letter rip. What, what's what's I gotta what's I gotta favorite? stick with the original, Brett and Sean. I uh, Triple H. Triple H Rock was good, but it, I feel it had too much shenanigans. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't remember too much about it, so you may be right for all yeah. I know. Um, MJF, MJF Danielson was incredible. Uh, but I, I don't know. Something's telling me I just got to stick with Brett and Sean. And yeah. Brian. Uh, Triple H and The Rock for me was a comedy of epic proportions. Yeah. And and it was it was it was the dawn of American badass Undertaker. And and just like that's and, it. And and I'm yeah, like that's what it was. And, wow. And I, I'm like it was I can't believe I missed that. That match whereas Sean and Brett was the standard setter. Okay, The Rock and Triple H was the more fun one. Mm. It, it it was just it was just fun to watch. Was it particularly great? No, but it was very fun to watch. And but I'm I'm gonna have to split the room here because I'm I'm not even gonna say recency bias. I was more entertained the first time I watched MJF versus Brian Danielson than I was the first time I watched Brett versus Sean. Wow. So that's what I'm so that's what I'm going that's where my mind goes. I'm just like which did you enjoy more on your first viewing when you didn't know about it beforehand. Okay, because sure. I, I hadn't I hadn't heard how great Brett versus Sean was the first time when I started watching it. Uh, I I had a buddy to the first time I watched wrestling in general was WrestleMania uh, 14 the night of, and then I went back and watched tapes and did all that, and that's how I found out about Brett versus Sean the Iron Man match. And the first time I watched it, I was like, "Yeah, this is pretty badass." I a little I'm not I'm not sure about 60 minute matches all the time but but this one was pretty good whereas I'm sitting at MJF versus Brian Danielson and I'm just like dude this is master class <laughs> and and yeah I know Danielson's involved and he can go 60 minutes like it's nothing okay that's it he, he, he used to do it every night on the on the ROH circuit. Yep. So it's like, yeah, I de- so it's like, yeah, I understand that. But to see MJF up his game to the level where he was keeping up with Brian Danielson the whole time, I'm I'm just like I I can honestly say that it's no contest for me. Brett versus Sean is always good. It is is always great. Okay, it's a legendary match. It will always be the standard setter. But I just think that MJF versus Brian Danielson was better paced. It it's like Brett versus Sean was was a standard setter. MJF versus Brian Danielson was the perfect mix. It, it it was the it put everything together like it it perfected the formula that was made by the first match hmm. whereas everything else was just kind of playing off it's it's just like we're going to perfect what they did here because that's basically what they did it was the same kind of thing hmm. So all that being said, now that we covered the three standout matches from this year's Revolution card, all that being said, bringing it home, what is your beard rating for this mat for this show 
AW Revolution. Uh, let's mix it up for a moment. Uh, Charlie, let's pitch it over to you first. What is your final beard rating for AEW Revolution 2023? What's a step below goat face? That full would beard. be full beard, four out of five. Full beard, four out of five. Definitely worth the price of admission. All right. Ryan, let's pitch it over to you next. Which What would you give this show uh, on a scale of clean shaven to goat face? Honestly, I think that the, I I think that this show as a whole, all together, it's going to be hard to top this for any show on any brand, any company. It's going to be hard to top a revolution because there was nothing that was a hundred percent bad. Everything on here had a purpose. Even even the matches that we didn't that we weren't really invested in going into, okay, led to something great. Yes, I'm looking at you, four-way tag match. (laughs) And and even that was good for what it was, but it it was a placeholder for what came afterwards with the return of FTR. Love it, by the way. And just, and for me, this is, um, this is, as close to perfect as a show could get. All, all right. the goats. I'm opening up the barn. All the goats on my face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Before Brian goes any further with that thought, Jaybird, give us your beard ratings for Revolution. This pay per view originally was was kind of low for me. I was like, it looks good on paper, but I didn't know what to expect. But it surpassed everything, like everything from the pre-show to the women's title. The tag match was okay. Um, the trio's title, um, Hangman versus Moxley, Wardlow versus Joe, like all the way to the main event. Like it was a very, very good pay-per-view and it was very well paced. Like we've watched AEW pay-per-views and I run out of energy about maybe three quarters away through the pay-per-view, but I was, it was so well paced and it didn't run as long as it usually does. So I was just hooked from every single moment. It was just every match had it own had it yeah, excuse me had it its own caliber of just how good it was, and I loved every moment of it. So honestly, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. Goat face, let's go for it. Yeah, I'll honestly go join you on that goat face rating. This I wouldn't say it was perfectly paced out. There were some points where it dragged and it just it was so jam packed. Was, like you, I started losing my energy level, but there was still enough to keep me going and keep me satisfied for the entire time. And I really can't see any major flaws. The only there weren't any real flaws that I can see with the show. It was more there are certain points where there's just eh, occasional like some matches just weren't as good as others, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they were bad, but I still, I had either way, no matter how you slice it, I had way too much fun the entire time to justify giving it anything less than a full on go face. This was a solid, a excellent, excellent AEW card as we've sort of gotten used to with shows of this caliber. And I just hope they keep the pace throughout the rest of the year. Because that... it's, it's it's like we said it's like we said. Okay, it doesn't matter how bad a show looks going in, because you get the because let's face it. Okay, going into Revolution, we said it. Okay, the build, the Revolution, not great, not not great at all. Like. It, 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 just going into it, you're like, I don't know if it, this could be one of the worst AEW pay-per-views. But it's, I've noticed the way that AEW does it is that the build, no matter how bad the build is, okay, when the pay-per-view hits and everyone's on top of their game, okay, the, mat- the matches are going to be great no matter what it is. So it's like, that's why you always look forward to their pay-per-views 
because it's like even if the bill's not great, okay, we're gonna get good. Re- we're gonna get great wrestling. Absolutely. And, and, so... and now, and now with the WWE being basically the same thing, at this point, it's a great time for wrestling. It's a great time to be a wrestling fan. And as we've brought up multiple times, okay, th- what a difference a year makes. Okay. I am fully invested in WrestleMania season for the for the first time in a long time. Okay, and and it's because of everything great that's been going on since the summer. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot to enjoy this time around, both in this pay-per-view and out. So, with that being said, now we're pitching it over to you our fellow fans and listening audience. What was your favorite match of this week and AEW Revolution? Who else do you think is going to or should be in the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments, respectively? And who's next up to go into the Hall of Fame? No matter what you think, we want to hear from you. So drop us a line all across the internet, especially on our personal Twitter accounts where you can join in the conversation personally. Brian, where can they reach you? You can reach me at Atomic Bean Pole. Charlie, where can they reach you? You can reach me looking forward to more of WrestleMania season at Charlene. And Jay, where can they reach you? Find me at seconding what Charlie just said at Hero Huey 316. And you can find me at I'm Robbie Rage. And for all of our personal and scholars social links all across wherever we're located you can check us out at our link tree located in the description below at linktree slash scholars of wrestling for all this good stuff the latest episodes and a whole lot more but with that that's all we got for this week but we're going to be back next week and you already know that because you know who we are we are the scholars of wrestling and you have just been schooled you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome See you all next week.